2011, Dr. George Joroge, a Kenyan scientist who was based in the United States of America and his team at the Mac Pharmaceutical Company made a breakthrough in the treatment of hepatitis C virus when a drug he took part in discovering was approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Today, the drug is reportedly demonstrating particularly good effectiveness in inhibiting COVID-19 increase in cells. Could we be staring at a potential breakthrough in the treatment of COVID-19? Dr. George Joroge now joins us in our other studio to make sense of this latest development. Dr. George, thank you so much for joining us right here on TV47. Just real quick, um, are we staring at a possible breakthrough in the potential cure and management of COVID-19 with this development? Thank you, Eugene, for having me. Yes, uh, this is a very sad time, but on the other hand, it's very interesting that we have some modalities that might pr provide some way to getting either a cure or a prevention for this deadly disease, COVID-19. Yes, the drug you're talking about is called Bosseprevia. Disco we discovered it uh, around 2011, or it was approved by FDA. Uh, by year 2011, uh, to be absolutely correct, it's around uh, May 13th, uh, 2011, for treatment of hepatitis C. And uh, a group from University of uh, <coughs> Arizona and Purdue University, they've uh, taken that drug and tried to see whether it is effective in uh, inhibiting uh, COVID-19. And one of the interesting things that they did is they looked this drug whether the, it can bind to this uh, to the enzyme to a very important enzyme uh, that is used by the virus to replicate what the virus normally does uh, once it gets to a human being cell or to the host cell it uncoats itself and once it's inside it generates or it creates new proteins it, uh, it cuts off some parts of the host as well as virus to make new proteins. It also replicates its uh, uh, nucleic material, which is the genetic material, and then uses those protein pieces as well as the genetic material to form new viruses. Now, the drug we have prevents this virus from making those new proteins, meaning, therefore, if it cannot make new proteins, then it cannot make new viruses. What these groups have done They've figured out how this enzyme makes those new proteins, and now we can use the drug that uh, we made for hepatitis C to do a similar thing as it did for hepatitis C to COVID-19. Interestingly enough, they know now how the drugs work, where it is, where it goes to the virus, and how it prevents the virus from proliferating. This is exciting because many of the drugs that we have uh, you know, there are like three different methods of, uh, that are, be are being tried. One of them is a vaccine. Uh, the other one is antibodies. And then the small molecules, which we are now calling the purposing, using some of the old drugs to treat a new, uh, a, a new, more, more, a new, a new disease. So what we, the exciting thing is now we have a mechanism, we have a drug that intercepts a particular mechanism in the virus, which is very interesting because now we can play around with that molecule, make it better, and it's more importantly, if we get resistance, we know where the resistance will come from and we can modify that drug. So the drug is pretty exciting, and as I said, it's very early because the studies that have been done are in the cells, not in animals. The next step would be to take that, that drug and do some studies in animals, and then eventually do what we call clinical trials uh, in human beings. Uh, clinical trials, I would like everybody to understand, is whereby you take the drug and have a, two different types of population. One group, they will be given the drug, and another group will be given something without the drug, in as we call it, placebo. And it is randomized. Nobody knows what they are getting. And at the end of the study, they will break the code and see from the data they get whether the drug is very is effective or not. That's what we call double-blinded, uh, <coughs> double-blind, randomized 
Dr. Dr. Njoroge, let me just uh, cut you short a bit. Uh, the, the excitement is really uh, very evident from your voice, of course, uh, with this breakthrough in, 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 in your own words. But uh, that viewer watching us tonight uh, might be telling us, save us the jargon, save us the whole scientific processes of how the coronavirus, uh, you know, behaves in our body systems. We want to know when are we going to be told, look, you can walk into this pharmacy or walk into this hospital and the doctor will prescribe uh, this medicine to cure you from coronavirus. Good question. Yes, the drug, as you know, has been approved by FDA for HCV. It hasn't been approved for COVID-19 because it's in our studies. So we hope that WHO will approve that drug to go on for clinical trials. It's only after the clinical trials that, and we seeing the results, whether it's positive in human beings, then that's when it could be approved for treatment in human beings. We don't know how, when that will happen. We are hoping it will go fast. As you've seen from newspapers, there are a lot of other drugs that are undergoing clinical trials. Some of them have failed and some of them have succeeded. You just saw some data, to, uh, some data today. Some of the vaccines are working. So uh, we have hope that uh, this medicine will also maybe see the light of day in the clinical trials. And after that, that's when we can actually now say when it would be available for treatments. If you look at Kenya today, the numbers were the highest uh, recorded um, ever since the announcement of the cases, uh, you know, started in the country. Um, what is your own assessment on how we are actually uh, fighting this war against COVID-19? Uh, some people would look and say we are actually not winning this battle. That's why you're seeing those from ISLI leadership uh, saying that why are we extending this cessation uh, of movement when we don't have an analysis of how the fast announcement or how the first move to seize movement in those areas uh, did work and the numbers continue to increase especially during this particular week what would be your assessment of how we are fighting this COVID-19 are we really winning this battle well having come from USA and I've been following what's going in the rest of the world uh, I, I think Kenya we are doing pretty well however we should not be complacent this is a dreadful disease. Viruses are dangerous things. We cannot play around with them. So we have to continue to do everything within our means to make sure that we adhere to all the things we have been told about. Washing our hands, social distancing, staying at home, all those things we should do even more of it so that it doesn't uh, go even further. Viruses can go very quickly just like fire and you just need a population getting some of it and then it, 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 it proliferates to the rest of the population. So we are doing well, but I think we can do better and we should continue doing better. The government is doing a good job sensitizing this issue and making people understand that one person can infect quite a number of people and those could infect it is, you know, it can continue like that and that would be dreadful for our country. So to answer your question, I think we don't have yet a drug that we can say a vaccine that will take care of this. So the only thing we have now is uh, the hygiene area that we can take care of and we should continue doing that. Let you go, uh, Daktari. I mean, there, there those who, especially those from the African continent, have been uh, saying that uh, the, uh, Western experts, uh, those who call themselves we uh, experts, have been sort of like prophets of doom when it comes to uh, what they say um, uh, will face Africa as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Remember before the cases started trickling into Africa, uh, there are those experts who kept saying that, uh, you know, when this uh, COVID-19 lands in Africa, on the continent of Africa, then there will be, uh, I mean, so many deaths were expected. We've seen uh, even statements concerning um, the, the projections of the numbers that are, are, were expected. But yet we are not seeing uh, a fulfillment of those particular statements. Do you also see them just as prophets of doom? Or do you feel that um, uh, there is some truth in what they say as far as the impact of COVID-19 uh, would have on Africa? Well, uh 
I think I, I think we stand uh, uh, we stand to what we have, and it's good thing that those prophets of doom, what they predicted, did not happen. Uh, and there could be a variety of reasons why that did not happen. Uh, we know our president Uru Kenyatta did a great job when he came out very early uh, to you know sensitize this matter and bring it to the public, tell them what they could do. Uh, Mutahi Kagwe, the CS, is also doing a great job as we know. Uh, I know many people asking why do we have these reports every day. They are very, very important for people to know what's happening and what could happen. I think uh, those models that give those earlier numbers are uh, they, they, they were predicted upon some information, but they didn't know how people are going to respond when they are told not to go out, when they are told to wash their hands. The, and this is something maybe I think has helped even with this cessation of uh, movement, you know. That also has helped, you know. I've I been talking to people from outside the country, in the Western world, in America especially, where people are not, some of them are not as serious as people are here. I think we can be more serious, especially in some areas where it's more prevalent. But I, I think people we have tried to do their best and they, I hope they continue to do like that because these viruses, uh, they are very small creatures and they can cause a lot of damage. So uh, my feeling is uh, the numbers we are getting, we might be off by some magnitude, but I think they, they are important numbers and we should continue. Nobody should play around with virus. Those uh, <clears throat> prophets of doom, Africa is an interesting place because the climate is conducive to a lot of these bugs growing and they thought when that comes, Africa will be the most affected. Unfortunately, they've been proved wrong. So this is something we should be happy about and hopefully uh, we'll get out of it uh, uh, unscathed or not as badly hurt like other nations have been, have been. What I read from you is that we are not yet out of the woods. But uh, Dr. Ari, a final question is um, on the issue of celebrating our own, because we hear of the Madagascar Wanda uh, drug. Uh, that is uh, the purported uh, drug or medicine that Madagascar uh, says is curing COVID-19. Here you are, you are actually among uh, top-notch um, uh, scientists and researchers. You've worked, uh, you know, in very high places, uh, and you did play a key role in even dealing with hepatitis C. What is it with us Africans in not celebrating uh, our own when it comes to handling uh, important matters that face the globe uh, uh, from your own perspective? Again, that's a very good question and a very, very important one. Celebrating is one thing, but we have to follow science. You know, discovery of medicines uh, is a difficult thing. I always tell people uh, it's not locket science. Actually, it's more complex. So when you hear somebody says that this medicine can cure, the question you have to ask, where is the data? Show me the data. And the data can only come from what I have just said, double blind, randomized, clinical trials. That's where you have a very well controlled case. You know, the, the originally people said that, you know, hydroxychloroquine will cure, but when they, they, the first experiment that was done was not a controlled one. Now when they do a controlled one, they don't see the efficacy they had uh, uh, talked about. So what we need, I know some of these medicines, even the herbal medicines could be very, very useful, but what we really need is to do thorough clinical trials to establish that these medicines are really working. It's not anecdotal. Otherwise, if we play around with anecdotal data, we'll end up in finding something which we think is working at the end of the day, it might end up to be nothing. So it is very, very important that we take serious steps in doing the right clinical trials guided by the WHO guidelines so that we get uh, data that is meaningful. In just under 20 seconds, Dr. Tari, if you can, uh, there are those who say that we should not be talking about post-COVID-19, 
we should be talking about adapting to uh, what we are facing today uh, as a globe. Uh, what would be your quick uh, take on this? Should we get out there and just wear the masks, wash our hands and live life, uh, you know, like we used to only adjust to these new measures? Or should we lock ourselves up and wait for the day when we are being told that there is nobody or there's no infection of COVID-19 out there? What should we be doing? My take on that is we have to be very, very careful because although there are promising data from, let's say, the vaccines, from the antibodies and from repurposed drugs, Again, things like vaccine could take a long time. We don't know whether you know, we'll get some or not. As I said before, with the hepatitis C, it took us about 15 years to find the first oral drug. That's the time it took to get a drug. I'm not saying hepatitis C is more, was more complicated than COVID-19. So I'm hopeful that we might get uh, a, a drug or a medicine sooner uh, than that. But how sooner, nobody knows. We are go this is research. You are researching the unknown. So when you're going to get it, nobody can tell you when. If, because if they did, they could have gone there right away and just picked it. So my feeling is we should actually start thinking, what about if we don't get one? We should adjust ourselves, adapt ourselves to the conditions of living with it. Uh, just like we have done with other viruses like HIV and, you know, now people have managed to, you know, live with them. Uh, and if we can get a drug, fair enough, we'll be blessed for that. Dr. Ari, thank you so much for making time uh, for us right here on Africa 411.